Hello community! Let's have a look at the latest research by Google called Mind Evolution. And yeah, it's a snowstorm outside. I'm sitting here in the Austrian Alps. It's beautiful snow all over. It's below zero. So just stay inside right next to the fireplace. And now I got some complaints that one of my last videos were a little bit too complicated. So today is story time. Relax. Sit right next to your fireplace. And here we go. I have multiple LLMs that search the internet and I get some AI generated summaries. And this is one of the LLMs that I employ and look at this what I got today. Mind evolution, a groundbreaking innovation in intelligent problem solving with genetic algorithms and refinement through critical conversation. It is transforms problem solving unparalleled result in benchmark. Yeah, the power of mind evolution. And I thought, what nonsense is this? And you know, I realized that a simple command like write the technical summary of the attached PDF can generate quite some nonsense, even with the best available LLMs. So let's explore this, where we are today. And I asked ChatGPT for Omni here, for example, here, hey, tell me in scientific terms, what are the genetic operators in the latest AI research of Google? Because for me, also working here in biotechnology and genetics, a genetic operator for me in my world is something completely different to whatever was chosen here in this paper. Interestingly, even ChatGPT stays within the paper, given my system prompts and all my examples, it stays within this notation and the description here and gives me just here, not a summary, but just here, you know, some sentences that are just taken out from the PDF. And then I was a little bit angry and I said, okay, now describe this simple genetic operators in non-technical terms for, let's say, a prompt optimization. And finally, finally it happened that system came back and said, okay, selection is, Imagine you have several versions of a prompt. You picked the best one. This is selection. And I said, wow. And then crossover takes the best part of two different prompts and combines them to a new prompt. And I said, amazing. Mutation, introduce small changes to a prompt to see if it gets better result. And I was blown away here by the marketing effort that Google put here into its scientific paper. So you see, our LLMs more and more, even if I say, hey, scientific terms, explain it to me, are more and more related here to the marketing slang. And even if I ask those systems, and I have a lot of roadblocks that I do not get this marketing BS, it is more and more getting that those elements are just shining through and there's hardly any scientific explanation here in this. Okay. Science, let's talk about what is happening here. We are here not in the training. We are here definitely at inference time. So Google wants here also like 01 or 03 models by OpenAI to optimize the performance in test time computer of our LLM by scaling here the inference time computation. The goal is a deeper thinking process of our LLM when we wait one, two, three, five minutes, maybe half an hour, an hour for the answer. And it is now implemented by exploring here an evolutionary marketing search strategy. So let's have a look at this. The main question was, hey, how can an LLM be guided to think deeper about a real complex problem and leverage inference time compute to improve here its own problem solving abilities? And the idea was simple. If we have a solution evaluator for our search process, the search strategy that we're going to apply have an advantage of being able to rely to improve here the problem solving ability with an increased compute. So the more inference time compute we offer to the LLM, the LLM will provide better solution because it has more time for some elaborated search strategies and an inherent solution evaluator it guide its way here to the best available solution at a given time. And I've shown you one of my last video here, the best of N solution. And now Google goes the next step in the development. So they have now the idea 
We propose, says Google, an evolutionary search strategy that combines here the free-flowing stochastic exploration and the large-scale iterative refinement process. And I say, of what? What are the objects? Explain this to me. Give me more details. Anyway, they call this now the mind evolution in marketing terms and, well, Okay, what is the idea? Idea I think is that this mind evolution methodology is not restricted to searching now in a formal space. You know, with REC, we have a vector space or we have some embedding or some other mathematical space we construct here. But now we do all of this here simply by optimizing solution in the space of our natural language. And you might say, that's, that's strange. No, we built agents that have memory, that have function calling to our tools. So we have calculators, we have Python environments, we have all the computer simulation here, whatever we need to have those tools available. And now we go back to the space of natural language to have a deep thinking, reasoning progress. Yep, this is the way we are going. And here we have the paper. The title is Evolving Deeper LLM Thinking, published today for me, recording this 20th of January 2025. And it is worth having a look at this because there are some surprises hidden. So they tell us, hey, it is a genetic search strategy. And me and my simple mind, I was still locked to the genetic biotechnology because over there we also have genetic search strategy, but on complete different topics. So whatever you use here in, in an AI publication, terms that are from a different part of science, please don't do this. Because, you know, every specific technical term has its own environment. So they say a genetic search strategy, yes, 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 and feedback from an evaluator, great. And again, divergent thinking, convergent thinking, uh, the whole mock of intelligent problem-solving behavior, and you see what, what is now creeping into these scientific publications. But you know, it becomes clear if you look here simple at the task. And the task is here, you talk to your LLM and say, hey, you plan to visit five European cities for 16 days in total. You only take direct flight to community between the cities. You spend five days in Madrid from day three to seven. And I'll show you want to do this and this. And you say, now they collected here different methodology, here the one pass with the best of N methodology. And then finally they show here the last line here that their solution is the best that can solve this particular problem. Of course, it is a hand-picked problem, but okay, we understand for this particular task, this is the best methodology. Now, if I look now at this from the official publication by Google, of mind evolution as a genetic-based evolutionary search strategy. I'm a little bit confused because this is rather simple, no? I mean, a sample solution, beautiful. So we just ask the LLM to come up with different plans for day one, day two, and then we have a feedback from an evaluator, whatever this evaluator might be, and the feedback is fed back. And so then we have now an evaluation. Some things are better, some things are worse. We have a feedback loop of a refinement or improved the previous solution. Now with the genetic operator of selection crossover and mutation, which I call just prompt engineering, but never mind. And then we have then one, maybe the best solution or one of the best solution, given we have a restricted maximum compute time budget or financial budget. And looking at this, I might say, Tell me, where is the innovation in this? This is something I'm kind of familiar with this, no? And I thought maybe it is here in the evaluation function. So in principle, any function tells us Google that can evaluate the solution quality can be used, including a pure LLM evaluation by the LLM itself of its solution generated. And they call it, of course, in the mind evolution scheme, they call this the fitness function. Great. So scoring solutions by measuring here the optimization objective or verify whether the solution satisfy the given constraints and provide corresponding textual feedback. So we have a simple feedback loop. And then it dawned on me, this whole mind evolution is just here a natural language planning exercise. 
That is all there is. Yes, it is also a little bit about reasoning, but we are here focusing, in my simple explanation, on natural language planning. Let's have a look at this. Of course, we start here the game here with a population initialization in mind evolution. So we have something here from, from population dynamics, from genetics. We apply this now to an AI term. And they say here, give them a target, a target problem. We independently sample now in an initial solution by prompting an LLM with a description of the problem and information needed for solving the problem and some relevant instruction. So this is simply a prompt that we have here, LLM. And I want us to sample here, I don't know, five or 10 times a given LLM with my problem. I don't need a population initialization, but okay. And then each of these initial solutions are then evaluated here and refined through additional torrents here of the refinement through critical conversation process. And I said, what the hell is the, <clears throat> this process? So I just looked at an example here, the refinement through critical conversation or RCC. And you know, in the LLM summarization, all these buzzwords were there without any explanation. But you know what it is? You have a task, you have a first initial solution, then you evaluate here the return. You have maybe a critique LLM that says, hey, was given that in Tokyo should be five days instead of the three days that are given here by the first initial solution. So therefore, we have to refine this. So just have a feedback loop. But now this is called an RCC methodology. Okay, Google, we have an RCC methodology. But I guess you and I, we understand what we're talking about. But then, then it happened to me, because here, looking now in detail, look at this particular table, I understand that I did not get it, because there was something hidden in the terms that was really there. Let me show you what I mean. So we have here engine, the maximum number of generation to search for a solution, the many independent populations we want to evolve, how many conversation per island, and how many terms per conversation. And at this time, I asked myself, what are exactly islands here for this? And I started to search and I found here 25 years ago, in the year 2000, there was a survey of parallel genetic algorithms from University of Illinois here, the Genetic Algorithms Laboratory. And I'm sorry, but what happened 25 years in IT, I, I was not familiar with this term. So those genetic algorithms were something. Okay, great. And then reading this, I understood here that this island model is more or less a strategy where the overall population is divided into multiple subpopulations. And we refer to those subpopulations as islands. So each island evolves independently, applying genetic operations like selection, crossover, and mutation within its own subpopulation and periodically individuals migrate between the island, producing new genetic materials. So I think this is from Darwin, right? I know going back to the old millennium, okay, and I understood this was a term, a technical term that is now used, but have given me complete different vibes, a complete different visual environment, because we do have genetic algorithms today in 2025, but they are definitely not those. So you see, she allowing different subpopulations to explore various reasons. So I would say today, so what we have, we have different prompts. We get different replies by the LLM. We can cluster these replies that we get from an LLM into thematic topics, thematic clusters. Those are the islands. And then I can go maybe find here the focus point of a cluster and then maybe have here uh, an edge functionality to another cluster and the cluster are allowed to exchange information about the most important fact or the most important methodology that they apply for the solution. So you see, interesting, you can find something completely different with a different kind of language that you use if you use those terms, interesting. So, 
in the context of mind evolution, whatever this means, an island model is now employed here by Google. And this creates now multiple groups of prompts. Those group of prompts are now the island. And then the prompt from one island, from one cluster, is shared with the other cluster. And this is finally the solution to all of this marketing speech. Because if I just look here what the LLM gives me as a summary of this paper, it would lead me in a completely different direction. So current performance of LLMs on this topic, horrible. Great. Coming back to the main topic where I told you, hey, we have agent, we have tools, we have everything that we need to have complex computer simulation. And now we go back here to real world, real natural language. And we think we can solve the problems of the world here without any computer modulation, without any calculation, numerical calculation, mathematical function. You think the human language is enough to find all solution? And then I found that they have here, Google itself has here, also referring here to the travel planner. This is a particular benchmark for real world planning. You see, again, we are talking only about planning, not so much about really executing here the reasoning of language agent. This is October 2024. Fudan University, Ohio State University, Pennsylvania State University, and Meta. But really then came here. Google DeepMind has its own natural plan benchmark that it used here from June 2024, benchmarking LLMs on natural language planning. So now this makes it really crystal clear. If you read the complete paper and you follow here all the references, what they're doing, they are looking here at a real small spectrum, only what is a natural language planning exercise. And in my understanding, only for this natural language planning exercise, they provide here a new methodology with a feedback mechanism. And they call this here something from generic operators for genetic operators and yes, God knows what. So unfortunately, it takes quite some time, but you see, a publication is not simply equal to any other publication. And I noticed this in the last weeks and months here, all this publication to get attention here from the community. They start to invent scientific terms, invent here complete notation for, I don't know for what reason. We do know how to communicate this, but now everything has to be brand new. Everything has to have a new name and everything has to have an unbelievable marketing methodology nomenclature. So, my goodness, so all this paper, so all this new research is for natural language planning exercise without any tool use. And they have here this particular genetic operators prompt engineering with a feedback loop. And this is the content here of this last paper by Google. And you see, this is the beauty that outside is a snowstorm. I cannot go anywhere else. I'm stuck here in my little cabin here. <laughs> and I just enjoy here the winter. If you are living here on the southern hemisphere of our planet, oh gee, I'm jealous if I think here of the people here in Australia, down under, maybe at Bondi Beach, enjoying here surfing. Oh wow, I'm here in a snowstorm and I'm reading here Google publications. Okay. So you see, even from such a paper, there are some insight. And I just wanted to share with you, be careful, do not trust here those automated summarization by LLMs because they can get things horribly wrong or impressed by the marketing slogan that were maybe generated by another LLM. And then we end up with this paper which could be completely rewritten with a clear focus. But yeah, I think this is the time we're living. So therefore, enjoy your snowstorm if you have one. Enjoy your fireplace. And you see, today's video was only about storytelling. So if you want to subscribe and get notified with my next video, we will focus a little bit more on a scientific topic.